Welcome back viewers, I hope everyone enjoyed the opening weekend of the 22-23 season. There was plenty of great action, some shocks with Liverpool dropping points already. Brighton first win at Old Trafford and many other great performances. I watched quite a bit of the exciting start from this very office I sit in now. Let me know if you think I need the decorators to come in. Let's get into my review of the weekend's action. Let's start with the Friday night game. I had Martinelli and Jesus in this game. Both looked fantastic to me, Martinelli missed an easy chance from a Jesus assist in the first 10 minutes. But then went on to open the scoring. So more than made up for that howler of a miss. I was very impressed with Arsenal. They have a lot of assets this year that seem undervalued. Zinchenko and Saka picked up an assist. Both looking like good targets going into the future. I also quite liked Saliba. He had a strong debut performance at 4.5 million he could be a steal. Next game was arguably the most exciting game of the weekend, in terms of on-pitch action. A great game to watch, even though I felt like a right clown watching. Fulham create opportunities with ease. Trent and Robertson only managed one-point outings. However I still quite like their creativity and attacking positions. So still willing to keep them going forward, but perhaps in the future one of them might need to be sacrificed. For a player I was massively impressed by, but I will reveal later on which one. Oh boy did the FPL king save me this week. Captaining Salah was a great decision as he scored and assisted in the game. I won't lie, I did think his points were rather fortunate. Without the introduction of Nunez, I'm pretty sure he would have blanked. Now the 3pm games did not go my way. Wolves look terrible, especially my Johnny Pick. He is on the firing line for a transfer out this week. Now I went into the late kickoff Saturday thinking this week could be a bad one. Until the saving graces of James and Mendy came along with a beautiful clean sheet. Watching this game it did look like Chelsea would struggle to score and they also looked a little more vulnerable. I mean Silva was running in the sand at times. I think his best years are gone now, which could explain why Chelsea are still looking for center backs. James in particular caught the eye, he had so many set pieces and was always in good attacking positions, whipping good deliveries into the box. Going into Sunday's game I only had Bowen and Holland. I still watched the United vs Brighton game. And what a game that was, there was plenty to scout in this game. I actually still remain quite positive on United, but they desperately need to upgrade the defensive midfield position. Brighton had a solid structure. Welbeck really caught the eye. At 6.5 million he could be a good budget option. I like the Brighton defense, but still have reservations about Sanchez as a keeper. Always seems to have a bad mistake in him. Now going into the City Hammers game, I was really excited, especially after all the great games at the weekend. However I struggled to watch this. Without the Sunday afternoon snooze creeping in. I can't lie, I don't understand fans that enjoy City football. I find it painfully slow and boring. They really remind of those toxic FIFA players that go 1-0 up. And try to keep the ball at the back for the rest of the game. Would be really nice if the billion pound assembled best team could try to attack the inferior opposition rather than playing triangles between their keeper and center backs. But then I was wonderfully awoken from the Sunday afternoon snooze by the new Norwegian superstar Holland. Fantastic movement all game and absolutely lethal finishing, like I predicted before the season, if he can stay fit then 30 plus goals is attainable. After Holland's performance I felt like I had a really strong week, but with a couple dilemmas to address. Before we get into my scout report. Let's address one of the dilemmas by bringing Johnny into my office. Johnny, welcome to my office, take a seat. First of all. Can you explain what happened in that Leeds game? Gaffer, isso é ar e didn't know me que per o assusinis buter finger sto sabe te val. Also mi oposite si de fui back. Forgot tat in te seconda al fione e to scoring te o ter gual. Seriously Johnny, that's the best you can come up with? I think I have made a mistake selecting you for these opening fixtures. I am willing to see how you fare in this home game against Fulham. Another bad performance and you will be axed from the side. Also if your training performances don't meet my expectations, I could possibly make a deadline transfer for another defender. You can leave my office now. Welcome to my scout report from this weekend's games. I have created a safe 11 and a risky 11. Hopefully there can be some targets for you to look into. For keepers I still think Ramsdale and Meslier are great options. For the same reasons as the last video, they have great fixtures and both defenses seem improved. 
For the safe option you can see it's double City and Arsenal. Both clubs produce dominant away performances against good opposition. All four offer excellent value. The risky set is, well you guessed it risky. I think each one of them can produce big points, but either bad fixtures or have a rotation risk. Lamperty is flying under the radar, he came on a substitute and looked great. Brighton fixtures now start to look better so picking him up for 4.5 million could be a steal. These midfielders are all targets I am taking a close eye on. For me Bowen to Saka looks really tempting as he has a really nice fixture run, and even in a bad performance by his high standards, he still managed an assist. Now these are more longer term ideas. They caught the eye, but not sure the fixtures are good enough yet to target them, but all four look interesting to me. Sterling in particular played the central striker role at times. This could produce big point scores in the future, unless they sign another striker. Now Welbeck and Mitrovic really caught the eye. They dominated their matchups against the supposed stronger center backs. Like both these budget options. Now you might be wondering how Nunez landed on the risky team? You would be right, but he is there as he would take the precious third Liverpool spot. With it being exceptionally difficult to get another Liverpool asset if he became injured or out of the team. Don't get me wrong I think this player much like Holland will do wonders this year. Just seems risky to put so much money into the forward line especially after last year's abysmal returns. Let's get into my workshop to finalize the squad. Welcome back to the workshop. I have gathered some data from FPLReview.com. Using the clean sheet odds stat, I have gained some targets I am looking at for this week. City has the strongest chance of a clean sheet. Cancelo looks the best defender in the game so we'll be planning transfer moves to hopefully get him in the squad. Now Walker is possibly the 5 million defender I should have gone for. Even though I did say, having the extra 0.5 million would be useful to stop the price rises affecting me. I do regret not going for any of the 5 million targets. Zinchenko, Trippier and Walker were all targets I seriously looked into. They all smashed it in week 1 and they look like good investments for the future. Walker in particular is the option I am seriously considering. I am going to wait for all the press conference news. And then perhaps a last-minute deadline move to take Johnny out for him. I will keep you posted on Twitter if I cave into the twitchy bum. Next up is the assist data. Using the predicted assist data. I found it surprising to see Mars so high. However he does always produce big points in home games against smaller clubs. So with the pep roulette in play, this could be a great differential for this week. Also Saka still appears on the table against arguably his hardest fixture for next five. I think he will be in my future plans for sure. I did find it interesting that only the Liverpool full backs made the list. I was expecting City ones on there as well. I also dived into last week's stats and Harrison shocked me. He actually had some of the highest creativity stats of the week. Big chances created and expected assists he performed very high. This is quite interesting as Leeds have great fixtures coming up after the Chelsea game in game week 3. One of the Leeds assets I am keeping a close eye on. Next goal scorer prediction. The top 3 on the predicted score data don't surprise me. I would have them in the same order as well. But the rise of Nunez in FPL teams will make it hard for me to not try and transfer him into my team. At the moment my most likely scenario is waiting another week. Then using a free double to downgrade Robertson and Bowen to cheaper alternatives. Then upgrading Plange to Nunez. The other option, which I think is riskier, is actually downgrading the King Salah to Saka and replacing Plange for Nunez. The Liverpool game on Monday night football will be of keen interest to me this game week. Watching the highlights of Brentford's game against Leicester. That really stood out just how many good chances Tony was getting. He arguably should have had a better week. So with their fixtures about to improve in game week 3. This is another player I will be watching live from the office with a keen interest in. As he would provide an exceptional differential up until the wildcard I use. Also I must point out the avoid list strikers. I would strongly recommend not going anywhere near. Watching the games it really looked like Bobby and Antonio just looked a little old. Made worse when their younger counterparts came on and offered so much more attacking threat. Definitely all three are avoids. Finally my starting 11 for this week. I've made a few minor changes. Going into this week I always knew James and Mendy would struggle against Spurs, so I'm not expecting much in this one. Maybe some save points and a small chance of an attacking return for James. The Wolves players look average at best. 
Nito gave me a little more optimism, as he did have good stats and looked okay on the eye. But Johnny looks awful, I really underestimated the change to a back four and what effect this would have to the Wolves' defense. I am seriously looking at the Walker transfer for him, so please, please please follow me on Twitter, Instagram or TikTok to keep updated on the latest team news. My Liverpool assets could really decide whether this turns into a good or bad week. I originally had Salah captain for this week. However Liverpool and Salah's performance didn't really give me much hope for a big return, so I decided to put the armband on the new Norwegian superstar Holland. He has an excellent fixture at home against Bournemouth. I'm expecting City to have a field day in this game, possibly even winning by more than five goals. My Arsenal assets look strong as well this week, thought both looked terrific against Palace, and Leicester still looked shaky at the back. I would be surprised if they blank in this home fixture. Last of all is Bowen. It's a big week for him to keep his spot in the team. He is second on the firing line mainly due to the hammers looking so awful against City. However a great fixture against Forrest should produce some points for Bowen to kickstart his season. Well that's enough from me. I hope I have provided you with some useful tips and information. As always I wish you all good luck for this upcoming game week. Please send me questions or comments on my other social media platforms linked in the video. Until next week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.